It's easier than ever to create and schedule meetings. All you have to do is message someone on Slack or Teams and say, hey, can we jump on a Teams or Zoom call for a few minutes to talk? The problem is that all of these meetings are not necessary. So in this week's engineering management lessons video, I'd like to share three steps that you can take to make sure that you're only engaging in or calling for meetings that are necessary. This week's email video is brought to you by Collier's Engineering and Design. Collier's Engineering and Design is a trusted provider of multidiscipline engineering, architecture, design, and consulting services to public and private clients nationwide. Utilizing the most advanced technologies available maintains their position as an industry leader. Their comprehensive suite of services includes civil site, architecture, transportation, governmental, survey and geospatial, infrastructure, geotechnical and environmental, telecommunications, utilities and energy, and project management. Collier's Engineering and Design values their employees and takes pride in their culture. With a focus on professional development and a family atmosphere, some of their offerings are a comprehensive mentorship program, a hybrid work environment, and competitive benefit packages. For more information about how you can join their team, find them on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, or visit their website at colliersengineering.com. Now, I'd like to walk you through three steps that you can take to help minimize, reduce, or eliminate unnecessary meetings. Who doesn't want to do that? Step number one, if someone asks you to be involved in a meeting, ask them the following two questions. And if you're the one trying to schedule the meeting, ask these questions of yourself. Number one, what is the purpose or goal of this meeting? Number two, what are the key points that you'd like to cover during this meeting? Ask these questions and wait for the answers. If there is a clear goal to the meeting, and if you think it's an impactful goal, and in reviewing the agenda, it contains valid points to be discussed, then you should go ahead with the meeting. However, if there is not a clear goal to the meeting, or if it doesn't seem impactful, then you should go on to step number two. Step number two, respond to the person requesting the meeting in one of two ways. You can identify another time when you're already planning to meet with that person and ask them if it's possible to discuss this topic in that meeting, as opposed to having a separate meeting just for that. Or secondly, if you can respond to their communication about the purpose of the meeting and give them all of the information that they need in an email or a chat message, then you may be able to avoid that meeting altogether. For example, if I say to you that the goal of this meeting is for me to obtain the information that I need to write this proposal, I specifically need the site location, the site history, and the type of development that the client would like to build, then you may be able to write an email back to me, providing me with all of that information, maybe even do a screen video using a software like Loom or a Zoom screen video on your own, and provide me with all the information that I need avoiding us having to meet at all, saving us both a lot of time. And if it was you trying to schedule the meeting, you may be able to do the reverse. You might say to the person after looking at the goal of the meeting, hey, you know what, instead of us getting together, why don't you just send me this information and I'll take a look through everything and I'll respond with any questions I have. Step number three, this is a step that you should probably take regardless of the outcome of the prior two steps which is to hold a recurring weekly meeting with anyone on your team or anyone that you communicate with very regularly during the course of a week. Oftentimes, we communicate back and forth with people a number of times each day, and we can probably eliminate 75% of those communications by meeting once or twice a week in a 15 to 20 minute focused meeting with that individual. This approach can drastically reduce the number of overall chat messages that you have to read and respond to by having one or two dedicated streamlined meetings during the course of the week. I know you're already thinking, I gotta do this right away. Get rid of some of these messages. So in summary, step one, ask for the goal of the meeting and the points to be covered. Step two, try to address the issue in an already scheduled meeting or by email. And step three, 
use recurring weekly meetings to eliminate these one-off meetings or other communications. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel here. We publish videos weekly to help engineering professionals become better managers and leaders. I'll see you next week.